Okay, so as promised, here's part two of the arpeggio practice video. So in part one, we looked at using seventh arpeggios, um, pretty much off the tonic and the seventh, um, straight up or straight down in varied cycles. And today what I'll show you is um, something I use to you know, create some different shapes in my playing, um, once again to even further extend the size of the intervals that I'm using and just to really understand the arpeggios from inside out. So this time instead of just playing the arpeggio straight up and down, I'll use a, an inversion, a, another altered inversion. So for example, if we're doing minor sevens up in um, semitones, I'll go three, one, five, seven uh, for the each arpeggio. <laughs> Okay, so it's a you know, slightly different sound. It's probably more along the lines of something you may use within part of a line when you're soloing. Um, again, if I change the cycle, it creates a different sound. The combination of the different key areas creates a different sound. So here's the same thing up in tones now. <laughs> And then to make things a little more interesting, why don't we um, use a different arpeggio? So um, let's say a dominant seven flat five arpeggio uh, moving up in the cycle of minor thirds. So up from say C to E flat, F sharp and A. Um, using the three, one, five, seven method, but this time it will be three, one, flat five, flat seven. Okay, it's quite an interesting sound. And then um, coming down, you may want to alter that and do five, seven, three, one. So that's a, again quite an interesting sound. Um, I think that that alone, um, and using the alterations of the seventh arpeggios and the varied inversions, is quite a lot of uh, information, and there's a lot uh, a lot of practice in there. Um, just to show you a couple of other inversions, um, you might go upwards using the five seven uh, three one inversion. And then come down the other way, three, one, five, seven. Um, or you can really look at stretching the um, inversion and stretching the intervals and do one, seven, three, five, or something like that. Okay, so that's that's interesting. And again, you know, not always starting on the tonic enables you to really understand the arpeggio as a whole and pretty much as a chord. So you're thinking of a of a key area each time you play, rather than specific notes that move in specific intervals. So um, there's a lot of, lot of practice in there, and um, there is a, another extension to this, which I'll get into in the third part, but hopefully that helps um, moving forward after getting through part one. Okay, I'll see you soon.